Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to review the Lucas 1862 palette of 48 colors. Um, I recently purchased this on Jerry's Artorama. It was on a great sale and um, I was really excited to try them out. I like to have a bunch of um, new colors to me to use, new pigments that I'm not familiar with, and this set had a bunch of them. So out of the 48 colors, I think 30, about 30 of them are single pigments, which is really nice. I like to get single pigments. Um, the thing I really like about these colors is that they're all unique, meaning that sometimes when you get some paints, especially if they don't cost, uh, I mean, I don't want to say don't cost a lot. This set was $114 on sale, so it's not like kids paint but you know typically a set of 48 half pan artist colors retails for about $400 so just to put that into a little perspective for you um, I sometimes when you see a, a set of paint that doesn't cost as much all the colors are very uniform across because of the synthetic dyes that they use but I found that I've got many granulating colors such as my ultramarines my um, cobalt turquoise this beautiful Verona green earth has a lovely granulation there um, I was just really impressed with how unique the different characteristics on the colors were something else that I found interesting was or I was happy to find this um, most of the colors are quite transparent Transparent. I have used some Lucas paint in the past where they felt a little bit heavier than other watercolors but the only colors that really seemed semi-opaque were like the cad yellow light, um, the, cad, uh, the permanent yellow deep, um, the chrome oxide green, and uh, some of the browns like the uh, I think that English red I forgot to put the black stripe before I swatched those out. Um, an English red deeper kind of opaque so um, I just wanted to kind of let you know that if you are gonna buy individual colors what ones you might want to um, avoid or go for but if you go online you can find a color chart and they do put their own symbols for um, transparent opaque semi-transparent and semi-opaque so you can get all the information you can also find the pigment information the only drawback to is that I could not find a list of colors for this set um, and when I was looking at people's swatches, I kept seeing like Viridian in the set and Viridian didn't come in the set. I actually ordered a pan of Viridian on this like uh, individually. So um, I will take a like a scan or a photograph of this chart. I apologize for my messy handwriting, but at least you can see exactly what's in the kit. I made a little chart to go inside my palette, which I need to label. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, and I like to do that because the way I, I wanted bigger swatches here, so I didn't swatch them exact map them out exactly the way they are here so I needed something where I could actually say okay so on the edit like that's that color you know that's that color I can easily identify them so um, that's why I recommend doing that for to keep in your uh, in your palette this is gonna go in my swatch book and speaking of swatch book um, we're gonna look at this these paints compared to other artist paints just so you can kind of decide for yourself um, because I do these reviews not to entice you to buy all the things I do them so that you can compare with what you already have or if you're thinking about making a purchase so that you can make a wise purchase um, so the palette that it comes in is, is really nice um, this palette on its own sells for $37 it's kind of crazy honestly uh, but it is a nice palette this lifts out and then you have mixing area underneath if you want to use it you've got these places for really big washes if you if you're a, like a landscape painter and you're working large and then you have these little divots for mixing I was a little concerned because of this palette you can see when it's open all the way <coughs> it falls this falls down so I was kind of worried that my paint would dribble down through that hole that hasn't been a problem I find that when I mix my colors in these wells they stay there so uh, but if that was an issue you could always mix in here and you know any big mixes put them over here um, I did order a cheaper version of one of these palettes for some loose half pans I'll show you that I know I've shown it before but in case you're new so you can see um, I ordered this on Amazon for $12 this empty um, pan and I've been putting in some other just odds and ends in here but again it's got almost like an identical uh, palette except for this these are flat where these are rounded um, and the thing I like about this is that that edge see that the edge there it stays straight out it doesn't dip so if you're holding this these both have thumb holes on them so if you're paint I wouldn't take this many paints out to paint with me somewhere but if you are holding this maybe you're, you're standing up and working at a counter and you just don't have the space to lay it down um, your it's going to stay flat and your paint shouldn't drip through that hole so uh, that was just a little nitpicky thing it's not anything to deter you from that but if you're thinking about buying just the empty half pan palette uh, I would advise you not to spend $38 on that one I advise you to spend $12 on this one now this could take a long time to get here from Amazon because it was 
it was, I don't know, it took a slow boat from China or something. It took a long time. But uh, definitely a good value. Probably if I knew how good it was, I would have bought two. But, um, but there you have it. Uh, this palette did stain a little bit with some of my phthalo cyan, cyan colors, but that's kind of typical, and um, I, I'm sure I could use a magic eraser on it if it bothered me. It doesn't get in the way of my mixing, so I'm really not that concerned. So let's take a look at these with um, some of the other artist paints that I have. And again, to remind you, I will be doing a demo in a moment. I just uh, I just wanted to get this out of the way in case this is what people, people were coming for. If they didn't care about the demo, they just wanted to see the paints, they could have that information. So I'm just trying to get this on camera here. So these are my M. Graham colors, and I swatched them out this way because that's how they are on my palette. So if that if you're like, why well, just watch them that way? That's kind of weird. That's why I did that. <laughs> But um, you can see the color intensity, very similar. Now, M. Grimm's are my favorite. I do find them to be, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm afraid that some of that's getting, whoops, some of that's getting cut off. There we go. Um, I, the M. Grimm's are my favorite. Uh, they're super transparent, super vivid. I've been using them for probably about 20 years since they, they first came out in my local art shop and they were a great buy. Um, so I have no complaints. They're kind of like the gold standard that I compare everything to, and um, and I think these these are these are pretty comparable. Um, I'm gonna kind of slide this under here. If we look at our reds, the Grams are probably a little more vivid and transparent, to be honest. Um, like if I look at that cad orange, um, that's probably closest to that permanent orange. They're pretty close. Um, you know, it's. I think the browns might be a little bit stronger in the Lucas, but, but I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't call them weak. Some, some companies have fairly weak browns. Um, there are greens there. Hopefully this is, this is helpful. The greens are very similar. Um, they're olive green versus the, like the sap green in um, M. Graham is much more vivid than the olive green in, um, in this version. This is their sap green, which is a lot more yellow. Than the um, the M Graham sap green, but they are made from different different pigments. This is PY153 and PG7, and this is PG7 and PO62. So you know they they everybody makes theirs a little bit different. It seems like now this is a student grade Cotman, and I'll just kind of hold that next to there. If you can't see it that way, let me slide that over a little bit. There, can you see that? Um, now these are the new Cotman colors, the ones that don't have the cadmiums or cobalts. I have no fault with these. The only issue with the Cotmans, and these are student grade paint, is that glazing. It's tough to glaze um, with those paints. Let's move along to, let's see, these are Holbein. Let's take them out of the page protector so you can see. Quite similar. I don't care for the Holbein as much just because the, 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 the set that I have, there's a lot of mixes, a lot of, um, multiple pigment colors and I, I just don't like that. I should have, instead of buying a set, I probably should have just bought a few tubes, but the prices were so low in the set that I, I did that instead. So I'll slide it over there. Um, these are Mission Gold, which are extremely transparent and extremely vivid. Um, let's look at those. Daniel Smith, I only have the six color, this is just a six color set of Daniel Smith, but um, yeah, I would say the Daniel Smiths are, are more vivid. Uh, let's see, these are Core, which are also a super transparent, vivid paint. Let's see, we have some of the same colors. Green Gold looks almost identical. Let's see, Ultramarine, like those, same pigment as those two right there. Um, I'd say actually, I, it's not that far off, the Cobalt Teal. Um, same pigment as cobalt turquoise. I think that's a little bit more vivid in the core, but uh, that's the same pigment there. So maybe slightly more transparent and vivid with the core. Those are Marami Blue. I don't have too many of those, just some odds and ends. Oh, those are watercolor pencil. This is the Da Vinci. Da Vinci is a great bargain too. They You can get really big tubes of it uh, very economically, which is great for teachers. So I always recommend the Da Vinci watercolors to people who teach who need to refill student pans. These are the student grade sonnets. They're actually are pretty good, except some of the pigments are a little dicey. Some of the, um, they're great for learning and they're great for mixing, but I think as far as archivally, um, some of the pigments are a little iffy. And that's the, uh, that's a Yarka student grade tubes that I got a long time ago. 
These are Windsor and Newton, some Windsor Newton colors that I had in a little bijou box. Actually, the color intensity seems fairly similar. Um, that's Yarka. The, 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 these are actually, I'm sorry, these are Lucas paints as well. These are the, I had the student version versus the professional version. Student version is actually pretty good too, the Lucas Studio. White Knights, which I actually did swatch out. Let's do my swatches on the White Knights, St. Petersburg colors. Um, quite similar. The St. Petersburg browns are quite weak. That's that's my only qualm with that set, but it's a very affordable um, artist watercolor. I mean, it's probably one of the cheaper ones. Lucas and White Knights are probably as cheap as you're going to be able to get uh, watercolors for artists. Those are the, um, those are liquid watercolors. Those are the um, Dr. Page Martin ones. Those are a student paint, which actually, those are Grumbacher student paints, which are actually pretty good. Those are Schminka, which, you know, people are crazy about the Schminka. I like them and everything, but they didn't knock my socks off as much as I thought they would. Uh, but I need, I'm going to play with them some more. And um, I mean, they're not bad paints at all. And those are just some like peerless type paints. Um, let's see, what else do we have? This is, oh, um, Kusakabe, which is a Japanese color company that makes the paint Aquila. That's their color. Look at their sap green. Isn't that just awesome? That's like, I do like their sap green because it's like practically neon. It's gorgeous. Um, and those are Aquafine. Van Gogh, which is a student grade, which is really good. A good student grade paint. I'm just looking to find where my, oh, my Sennelier. Let's this is the artist grade sommelier, which is the student grade is really good too. So there's a comparison with a the sommelier. They're, they're quite similar, I think. Uh, sommelier may be a little bit more luminous with all the honey in it, but um, I think that these definitely hold their own and oftentimes they are just a fraction of the price. Like for instance, the sommelier, I've seen their set of 48 going for about $2.25 online uh, at your discounters and on Amazon and whatnot. And um, still, $1.14, that's, that's almost half. And like Schmink, a set of 48 is usually around, the cheapest I've seen it has been like 350 So, you know, when you're looking at a savings like that to just, you know, a, a fraction less vibrant, for me, I think it's worth it. So hopefully that will help you kind of make up your mind whether these paints are right for you. But then again, I mean, if you have an artist set of paints, you're good. You're, you can paint, your, your thing's going to be fine. But you might, you know, maybe you want to try a tube of this or a tube of that. So... What we're going to do here is a uh, painting of, this is a great book. This is Birds and Butterflies, Memories of a Lifetime. It's copyright free images. They're all like public domain vintage postcards. And I just like it because I like um, vintage stuff. And I have been using those for a while for like scrapbooking and crafting, decoupage and things like that. I'm going to zoom in a bit and we are going to do some painting. I already sketched in my design because I... Um, I didn't want to take a super duper long time and we are going to start I don't think I'll do a background on this because we're already like 12 minutes into this video I think I'm gonna start by putting a wash on the butterfly let's start by wetting the wings and adding some color and so I'm working on 140 pound 100% cotton aqua bee paper. These are six by nine sheets and they're very affordable. Um, can't remember exactly where I got them. I got, I think I got them online. Um, I'm not sure if it was at Jerry's or Blick though, to be honest. And now I'm going to add, um, let's see, let's try this kind of, uh, what one is this? I don't have my chart in front of me. Permanent yellow light. That's why I need to, I need to, uh, I need to add uh, labels to my little chart there. I'll be using these um, frequently, probably on my Friday live streams, because I just like how it fits on my table up here. I think I also want to warm that up a little bit, so I think I'll just try a little of this orangey color. I'm just playing here too, guys. I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to do a limited palette or anything. I really just want you to be able to see these paints in action. I also bought a, um, ha a full pan of oxgall, synthetic oxgall rather, uh, but I didn't find that these had an issue flowing, so I didn't bring it, I didn't, I'm not using it here, but I am going to do a video just on oxgall 
so that you can uh, kind of see what it does and see if that's a medium that you want to invest in. It wasn't very expensive. It, a half panel, I think, was like about three fifty, so three dollars and fifty cents. Was it this one? I think I grabbed. I think I want to grab maybe a little bit of a pinkish color. So let's try this. I, I so far I keep going to that color. I think it's rose matter. Um, or car it's carmine, no, I'm sorry, genuine rose. It's a really pretty color. Adding that in here and there. And I want to put a little bit of uh, teal in there, I think, and I'm going to go with my favorite color from this set, the cobalt turquoise. This is a really pretty color, not only in its hue, but it's just the way it granulates is so lovely. I didn't find any um, drawbacks working with these. I was I was a little worried that they might be kind of chalky because um, the ones that I the, I had the 12 pack and there were a few colors in there that felt kind of not chalky, but heavy. They felt just very I don't know, minerally or something. They just felt like just heavy, I guess. Kind of like a crunchy. I don't know, just just heavy. But I didn't, I, I don't think the whole line, that's representative, representative of the whole line. I think they all have kind of their own um, characteristics. Now I'm thinking about how I want to handle the black in the wings. Because as you know, I'm not a big fan of uh, using black and I am going to be needing some really dark color on my pansies so I think um, I think I'll use some violet and let's see what the violet looks like on its own it's a dioxazine violet here and I might need to add oh let's see you know what I'm just going to paint the body in there that is a little too purple I'm going to add maybe some green into that. And I'm looking at my design there and deciding what green I think I'm gonna want to use. I'm gonna look at my little swatch here. Um, I kind of wanna try some of that um, green earth, the Verona green earth, because I know it's it's just granulates really nicely. If I added yellow to that, yellow is the opposite, but I know it's gonna make it a little more brown than I want. So if I add this green, I think I'm gonna get much more of like a indigo color rather than a brown. And if some blends into the wings, it, that's going to be fine because there is just a little bit of like a shadowy blush there. I like what's happening there. I think I'll add a little bit into this area too. Because I find that if I can do some stuff here on this uh, while it's wet and it's blendy, then it just kind of takes some of the work away when um, when I get to the when I get to the detailing step. Because remember, our brains are smart. Our brains fig will, will fill in the blanks if we forget something. You know, our brains do a lot of that piecing, like work together. That's why, you know, when you look at an impressionist painting, you know, if you look really close at any one element, it kind of looks like a mess. You don't really know what's going on, but your brain looks at that and uh, puts it all together. You stand back. That's why when you stand back from your paintings, they look a lot better. There, isn't that pretty? Oh, I like it. Okay, so I want to skip around a little bit. I am gonna go up to this flower petal here. I am going to wet it, and you know what? I think I'm gonna need my credit card scraper, so I'm just gonna reach over and grab that. No, I have not done my hair or my makeup, so um, if you got a little glimpse of me in the camera, uh, sorry, <laughs> nothing I can do. I don't, I've been in like it's no makeup, uh, zone for a couple weeks with the vacations and everything. So I'm going to go in with this lovely bright yellow and add it into the center here. Let it kind of flow out and I want a little bit on the rim. And then I uh, will spring a little bit down there too. Now I'm going to go in with that uh, genuine rose. Love that color, so pretty. It's so um, subtle, but 
it's like subtle but clean and bright when you add water to it it's subtle and when you don't it's more bright and you may need less water if you're working on a wood pulp paper like a sulfite paper oh no that's not the color i want to get a little bit of that violet that we used on the butterfly you can use whatever colors you have that are closest more of a blend between those two colors and a little bit more yellow in there I think maybe we'll try some of the other yellow that I used because I'm all about experimenting with this piece oops maybe a little bit more of that purple find that my uh, paper is drying quickly on me. I'm going to try this scraper at this point. I don't know if it's going to do much until I put my dark in. I don't really want to put the dark in yet because I don't want all my yellow to get all icky. Now I'm going to skip over to this one, wet that petal and repeat those steps. Use those yellows. See, I think it's got pretty good flow without any additional ox gall. Uh, I know I, I know Schmika doesn't put ox gall in their paint, so I am gonna try using that ox gall with the with the Schmika's ox gall is basically something to increase flow. It reduces the surface tension of water, kind of like soap. on this paper I need to work a little bit faster because it um, it's absorbent and it's and the heating is drying things out this brush I'm using is a number eight round mimic Now you do have to just kind of keep in mind to skip around as you're working. Now one of the things I love about this set is it has Indothrone Blue, which is PB60. It's a, um, a really lovely color. It's right here. I keep getting confused to where it is because of the other swatch that I made. But it's just this really beautiful um, blue that is just it's almost like an indigo but it's not as black it's not a mix like indigo can have a mix with green and violet as well as black in it I just find that color to be extremely rewarding to paint with it's almost just like um, like an iris blue and I'm gonna use some green gold another color that I really enjoy Mixing that right in there. I probably should have mixed it ahead of time. Sometimes I like to mix it on the paper because it keeps the color a little fresher, it seems. But not in this case, because this case I just had to go back in and mix everything anyway. And I think I want something to lighten it up a little bit, so I'm going to use one of the yellows that I used earlier. I think I might as well just use this one here. And just kind of dab it wherever I want to highlight. And I'm going to go back in with that blue and put that, dab that into my shadowy areas. And then I'm going to use my credit card scraper to put in some veins. Well, that's all there is to that, really. So that would be the same process to do the other leaves. 
I think I'm going to skip up to this flower in back there and I think that I'm going to kind of wet it all at once because um, uh, cause it's kind of hidden away and you wouldn't really see as much uh, detail in that than you were with the ones in the front. And I'm going to use some of that blue, that Indithrone blue. This one has some pretty blues in it, so I want to show that off. And some Dioxazine purple. And a great way to get to know a new palette is to actually paint with it. I know a lot of people do reviews where they just swatch it out and that's all. And I may have even done some in the past like that, but I, I don't think you really get to know the worth of a paint until you've actually painted with it. I've got a little bead of uh, water there that's kind of keeping my paint from moving because it's just, it's just too much water. So I'm just kind of soaking that up with my brush. I think I'm going to add a little bit of the pink in there as well. I don't notice a huge color shift from wet to dry with these, which is nice. Of course, the wetter you have your paper, the more shift you're going to see. If you end up with one part of your flower drying before another, you can actually paint over that. Just kind of mix up those pigments again. Uh, let's see what I'm doing with my brush, and that will keep you from getting those ruffly edges unless you have, unless you do add more puddles of color in there. Having everything dry um, uniformly, that's what keeps the the uh, puddles away. Now up here, because these little buds are small, I'm just going to go in and, and add the color. I'm not going to pre-wet them. It's some pink. And add some violet. But I found the colors in this set to be quite strong. And maybe just a smidge of that blue. That blue's a great color for darkening greens and purples too. We'll do the same thing over here. So now, let's see, is my butterfly dry? My butterfly might be dry enough to do my little stems down there. Let's try a little yellow ochre here. And some green gold. And we will do one of these browns. Let's do this, um, this is burnt sienna, I think. from my palette on there just to kind of make it match in. I feel like I do need a little more color in there. I'm going to mix up some more green and add that right to my stem there. There we go. Just bringing up that stem, following it through. I can't see it in the postcard, so I'm just kind of, um, I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. And I just realized that angle doesn't really correlate to anything, hmm. Unless it's just kind of coming off of that stem. That doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna bring that up behind the butterfly too. Stall doesn't really matched anything, but I'm going to try to bring it up to something, maybe up to that flower. <laughs> so 
So you can catch stuff like that where you might be a little bit off. That's good. It's good to catch that now before you get too far. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to work on this portion of my flower. I think I'm going to try painting it in dry. I'm going to start off with this yellow. I'm going to switch over to this warmer yellow, get some of that in there. Go over to my pink. I love watching the colors flood. And go into my violet. Careful around the butterfly wing because that's just going to be slightly tucked underneath. Nice contrast there between the light butterfly wing and the edge of the flower. I'm going to mix this in with some of that rose color and then kind of add it where the two colors meet. And there I got some brown. I'm going to lift that right up. Just smoothing with a damp brush. Okay, so now I, I'm going to paint these two colors, these two petals in back. I think I'm going to go right ahead and paint them in with the pink. Um, I'm going to do this one first because I think I'll want to let that dry and then do the other one. Don't really find these, um, you know, to have any sort of special working characteristics that you need to be aware of. They seem to work just like any other paints. It doesn't seem like I have to add more water or less water to make them do their thing. They seem to be pretty reliable. A touch of that blue in there. I'm going to blot it a little bit because I do want that petal a little bit lighter. And that's dry. We'll move up to the stems up higher. I'm going to take the green gold and the indithrone blue. And go ahead and paint them in. I apologize if my hand's in the way, but I get a better line if I hold my brush straight up and down. Just kind of just do some basic stroke leaves. And that's all there is to that. I'm going to fill in a few more of these other leaves while I'm at it. Sometimes you'll see on a leaf that it'll have an edge in one of the colors that you've used for the uh, for the flowers, which is kind of interesting and pretty. Put that in. I'll fill in some of the other leaves that are that aren't touching any wet petals. This, uh, this took longer than I thought. Sometimes when I'm just like sitting and painting little ATCs, I underestimate how long they take. <laughs> I probably should have made this its own video. But hopefully, uh, hopefully you found it useful. Don't like to put a review up without a tutorial in it for some reason. I figure if you really are interested in buying something, you want to see how it, you know, how it really works. Instead of just somebody swatching no colors, which is, I mean, that's good too. I watch those as well. But sometimes you can't really tell how good a paint is just by swatching it.
just like any paint, it's not going to paint it, you know, it's not going to paint it for you. You've got to, you've got to do the work. A little bit of yellow. I think what I'm not liking about this is that I didn't put a background in. I should have put like a yellow ochre background in. I like to have backgrounds on my cards. On my, uh, paintings, I should say. this there we go oh I could see some pretty granulation happening in there uh, that's kind of nice oh you know what didn't we have some of that Verona green somewhere let's treat let's uh let's take some of that and add some of that into some of those leaves too because that's such a pretty color that granulates. The color itself I'm not that crazy about, but I just love how the pigments separate and give you that beautiful um, texture. And you got to do the veins while it's wet if you want to do them with a credit card scraper. Otherwise just let, let it dry and then paint them with a fine brush. This is a little quicker, a little easier. I don't know if it looks as nice as, as painting them in, but um, I think it just depends on how detailed you're going to get. If you're going to get painting super duper detailed, you probably don't want to do that. With a credit card scraper, you probably want to keep your options open. Oh, I probably shouldn't. You know what? I'm going to have to wait on that one because that is too wet next to it. Okay, now we can work on the butterfly, uh, the details and the wings. I really want a nice dark. Um, so I think I'm going to try red and green to get my super, super dark. So I'm going to try this red. I'm going to put a little violet in it. <clears throat> I'm going to put, um, actually put some of that blue in it. I'm going to put some of that green in it. And it is a little bit brownish, but it's not too bad. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to put the uh, shadow on the side of the body. I'm not going to put the antennas in yet because, oh, well, I should probably switch to a smaller brush too. A number eight round might be a little too big to do tiny little details. Got my brush bucket here. Oh, what do I want? This one will do. It's not super tiny, but it's pretty small. It's a number two round. Comes to a nice fine point. That's kind of the biggest thing. You just want something that's going to come to a nice fine point. Could use a liner, I suppose. Just tiny little strokes. You're not adding a ton of stuff here. I should have mixed up way more color though, I'm noticing. You can do that to both wings. I'm going to mix up a little bit more of that color. So remember we used that Verona green, which, you know, because it is kind of a semi-opaque, it's a uh, granulating color, big pigment particles. It's not going to be super dark. 
I really don't like to mix with a, such a small brush, honestly. I'll try that, that's pretty clear. It's a pretty clear yellowy green. That'll give me a nice black, I think. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here on the other side. I'm gonna try to keep my hand out of the way. In fact, I'm just gonna turn my clipboard right around so that I can maybe hold it at an angle and keep my hand out of the way. That seems to be working a little bit better. And that's a tough thing, trying to keep your hands out of the way when you're doing a tutorial. Any place you feel like you need a little definition in the wings too, you can go ahead and add a line with that dark. It's not going to look too harsh because it's not a tube of black. It's, um, you know, it's a color we've mixed, so, and the colors are all on the painting already. This is a very awkward uh, way to approach this. I would hold, hold it however you are comfortable. I'm just trying to make it so you guys can see it. That's really, that does not look the way I want it to. It's really kind of gummy, but that's right, you get the idea. I think maybe I'll go back to my bigger brush and just kind of dab it in a little bit to get rid of some of those harsh, straggly lines. It's important. That's why it's important to, to use the bigger brushes and to use a variety of sizes so that you don't end up with every stroke looking the same. I find if I go in here and there with the bigger brush, I get a better, a better look. All right, we've got a couple more petals to do. We have this one up here, and that is going to be, clean that out a little bit. That's going to, oops, I got a big bead of water on there. I'm gonna have some of this color in there, and I'm gonna have some violet. And this petal is a little darker than the other one, so we just gotta make sure we put it in a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna go in here and actually fill in this little section. And I'm just going in and painting this little petal back here. It just goes to one of the other flowers. I'm not really gonna worry about too much, just kinda wanna get some color in there. Sometimes you just want to suggest things um, in the background. And then for the darker um, areas in the center of the pansy, I'm actually going to use straight dioxazine violet because it is probably the darkest value color that I have going on. I am just kind of pointing my brush in the in that mix that I had made, but it's pretty much just the violet. And make sure you don't have any beads of water on your brush. And you're just gonna flick out the color. From the middle. See how that almost looks black when you have it overlaid on the uh, yellow? Do the same thing on each of the edge ones. I'm going to turn it to do this one. If you need to add a little water, just do a tiny little bit because you don't want to dilute the paint. You do need enough water for it to want to move though. And then if you want to add any other little details here and there, I would do it just with a very light touch. 
Maybe you want a little bit more turquoise in the wings or something. Or a little bit of pink. I like to punch up my favorite colors. My favorite color is red, so I tend to, you know, anything pinks or reds, I will go in and I will accentuate them a little bit. But that's up to you. You can do as much or as little of that as you like. And kind of dry brush it in there so you don't get into too much trouble. And I can go back to that first yellow that I used. And I can do some of that in the wings as well. Because you've got that lovely wash underneath that kind of ties everything together. And this yellow was really warm and pretty too. And you put some of that in there. Uh, so I guess the only thing I would caution you about on this paint set is that there are um, cadmiums used. So, you know, if you have pets, you might want to, like especially cats, you might want to, you know, make sure you empty your rinse water when you're done painting, rinse out your bucket. You know, you don't want the cats to drink it. You don't want to dip your um, paintbrush in your cup of tea while you're painting. <laughs> you know, you just want to kind of minimize your risk there. I don't think they've been like too crazy, too, uh, I don't think the risk on cadmium or the worry is as bad as it used to be because you used to have like crazy labels on uh, paint tubes and warnings and stuff on websites and I don't really see that so much anymore except in like the state of California that's part of the, their one of their uh, initiatives to, to uh, be aware of that but um, but I'm wondering if maybe it isn't as big of a deal as they thought it was I'm not I'm not 100% sure I'd rather be safe than sorry but I just wanted to let you know that in case you were considering buying this for kids um, you know, if your kid likes to snack while they're painting, it's, it's well, that's not a good idea anyway, but, um, you know, just be aware of it. You shouldn't be painting and then taking a bite of a, you know, piece of chocolate or something like that. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to cross, I don't know, contaminate or whatever. <laughs> but there you go. There is the finished little motif. You could do more on it if you want. Like I could go, like, and go in with, um, you know, more pinks on these petals or more purples or um, play with a little bit more that way. Like I like to do the purple, I'll do like maybe some veins coming in from the edge of the purple. That's kind of pretty. So fuss with it a little bit more if you want to. And um, and that is the uh, the Lucas watercolor set. You can use whatever watercolors you have though for this. I mean, you don't need to buy this, but I just wanted to put it out there in case you had been thinking about it. I know there are a few people that had this on their Christmas list and didn't get it and we're thinking about buying it so hopefully this was helpful let me know what you think in the comments below are you going to try this painting um did you paint along with me let me know i love to hear that sort of stuff i want to thank you so much for watching if you know anybody that would like this video please go ahead and share with them there are handy sharing links below the video and please give me a thumbs up before you go if you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting